So have you been thinking about getting the new Cricut Hat Press or did you buy the new Cricut Hat Press and you really haven't used it very much yet? So for today, what we're going to do is we're going to create multiple types of hats and we're going to go through HTV or iron-on. We are going to go through sublimation. We are going to do uh, Cricut Infusible Ink, which is Cricut's version of sublimation. And then we are going to do Cricut Infusible Ink pens, which is a, a whole new thing <laughs> that's like sublimation. So with the ink pens, a lot of people probably don't realize this, by the way, they're pens and markers, um, but you don't have to have a sublimation printer and you don't have to have a Cricut either. You don't have to have either one of those to use those markers and pens and then use heat just to you know, make it a project just like sublimation. So we're gonna go through all those different ones. So I wanna take you over to the craft table and show you all the things that, the types of hats that we're using and the machine and that kind of thing. And then we'll pop into Cricut Design Space and I will show you each of the designs. And I created some new designs specifically for these hats. I'm really excited about one in particular <laughs> that I will show you when we get there. And by the way, if you are new here, you are crafting with Kim Byers. My goal is to help you craft with confidence, for you to have fun crafting and to know exactly what you're doing when you get to the craft table. And by the way, if you haven't opened the box yet or you haven't actually got yours yet, I did a video last week where I walk you from beginning to end, how to set it up, how to do your first project, all those things and all those types of questions, kind of like an ultimate guide to the Cricut Hat Press. So you can pop over and check that out. I'll link it up above for you and down below along with the links of everything that we're using today. And by the way, guys, I hang out down in the comments. <laughs> I love to hear from you guys and I love to answer your questions because again, crafting with confidence, you have to be able to ask some questions sometimes, right? So make sure you pop down and talk to me. And if you don't have time for all that, hit that thumbs up and just let me know that you guys were here. Okay guys, let's go craft together. Okay, so here we are on the craft table and these are the things that we're going to be using today. So we have our new hat press um, and the hat press form. So these two come in a box together. By the way, if you've not seen that video, I'm gonna put it up above and link it down below so you can see like the whole unboxing, what's in the box, how to create um, a first project, that kind of thing. And then um, also I have strong heat transfer tape and the new precision tool for weeding. I'm, I'm really loving this tool. And then I have my lint roller, I have a fabric ruler, I have various um, heat transfer or iron-on that we're going to be working with, infusible ink pens and infusible ink sheets. Not shown, I have my parchment or butcher paper that we'll be using as well as my sublimation paper. Um, and then this are these are a couple of the hats. So we're gonna be doing multiple types of hats, bucket hats and um, all kinds of things like that, but these are the two Cricut brand hats that are perfect for sublimation and fusible ink, that kind of thing. So let's go ahead and move everything out of the way and pop over to Cricut Design Space and let me show you the designs that we're working with today. Okay, so here we are in Cricut Design Space and I've just gone ahead and gone into the homepage and opened up a new canvas and pulled in a few things that I want us to work with today. So um, these hats are gonna be all about sort of managing kids. <laughs> <laughs> for the summer um, and in that kind of thought process I created a set of four new um, SVGs and PNGs this chaos coordinator this mama praise toddler tamer and meltdown manager now today we are um, not going to use the toddler and the meltdown but we are going to use these five so um, I will put links down below to all of these so you can easily find them um, but the chaos coordinator is going to be our infusible ink um, so the sheets the transfer sheets this mama praise is going to be our sublimation design uh, the berry sweet with the little strawberries is going to be our infusible ink pens and then Good Vibes is going to be um, HTV or iron-on. And then this monogram right here, we're going to do HTV or iron-on again with that. And I wanted to talk to you about using different types of iron-on. So whether it be glitter or pattern. Um, so we're gonna talk through a couple of things with this one. So what I did, um, over to the side right here is I put swatches for the different colors of hats that I'm going to be putting these designs on. And I like to do this because I want to truly see, for one, is my design going to fit? So this is roughly the area 
of the hat surface that I have and what does it look like against the color that I'm putting it on. So whenever you're looking at your canvas, it's great to see it against white. And you're like, oh, this looks so fantastic. And then when you go and you add that color to another color, sometimes we get disappointed because we're like, well, that's not what I thought it was going to look like. So what I did here with the swatches is just making sure that my design is going to look good on top of you know the color that I'm putting it on. Um, okay, so if you have questions about uploading images and that kind of thing, I'll put a video up above showing you how to do that. Super, super simple. And then um, as we get to each hat, I can walk you quickly through which, you know, what you do with each one of these designs. Some it's super, super simple. And then others like the infusible ink pens. I want to talk to you a little bit about picking the pens and picking the image and that kind of thing. Okay, so let's talk about our very first hat. We are going to start with the sublimation project. And so this is sublimation. Um, and so I actually have a video that's all about how to use Cricut Design Space for sublimation. It is very possible, it's very easy, and it's amazing, especially if you're a Cricut Access um, subscriber, then you get access to all those hundreds of thousands of images that then you can use for sublimation and you can change and work with everything right in Cricut Design Space and then send it along um, to your printer. So basically we're going to print then cut this image. So if you are using my designs, I provide you with both an SVG and a PNG. You want to use the PNG for your sublimation. So that's what this one is right here. So you can see over here, this chaos coordinator, this is a cut file. You can see that faint black outline all the way around. This is an SVG. So if you look over into um, the layers panel, you can see basic cut, right? So all the things are cut. If you click on this mama praise here, you can see this is a print then cut. So that's where we're going to start today. So I'm going to go ahead and um, hide all of my basic squares so that I can start sending things over to the machine. Okay, so we're going to use our Explore 3 today. So let's go ahead and hit make it. And so it pops up onto the sheet. And if you just know you want to make a ton of the same, you know, design, you can fill your sheet up um, with this tool. So just hit this mama praise. And so um, you may want to, you know, move them out a little bit to give you some tear space around it. And we'll talk about that whenever we're putting that on the sheet. Actually, I'm just going to, I love this little saying. So I may make my girlfriends some hats too. That would be fun, right? Okay, so there we go. So now what we need to do is when you are using heat, you are going to mirror image whatever it is that you're doing. So if you're using sublimation, you're using heat transfer, um, you know, HTV, you're using, you know, HTV iron on, just so you know, that's, they mean the same thing. Um, or if you are using infusible ink pens, you are mirror imaging what you're doing. So there we go. And now we can hit continue. And so here you see, um, we're going to print it on eight and a half by 11 paper, and we're going to send that to our printer. So you notice that I did not have a machine hooked up. So if you happen to have a Cricut Joy and you don't have an Explorer or a Maker, you can still do this. Okay, so we are going to use my um, Epson, um, and I'll put the video up above how I converted this Epson printer to a sublimation printer. We want to take off that bleed. We do not want a bleed. Um, that is for when you have your Cricut cut out your design, and we're not doing that. Um, and then I always, always, always use your system dialog box. And the reason that you want to do that is because that system dialog box is going to allow you to choose the best possible quality from your printer. And so your printer is not thinking you're, you know, printing off um, a spreadsheet or something and holds ink back. You want it to give all the ink. So we hit print. Okay, and so now that I'm looking at my system dialog box, you just want to make sure that you're choosing best quality. So some have drop downs, and this one has this little bar, so I'm just going to move it all the way over to best or like photo quality. And now I am ready to print. 
Okay, so this is the sheet that we just printed out and I went ahead and tore off um, some of the edges, but I wanted to show you that this is the bounding box that the Cricut is going to, or you know, um, when you print it from a Cricut Design Space, it's going to print this bounding box. You want to take that off. You wanna take everything off that's not your design. And you're probably wondering, why did she tear it instead of cutting it with those great, you know, like I've got great scissors and paper trimmers and things. The reason you tear it is because you don't want any straight lines. You want it to be a little um, crooked. You don't want any press lines. And so if you tear it, it just gives you a cleaner look when you actually press it on. The thing is, is um, so we've gone ahead and, and torn this one out. And so what I wanna do now is I wanna prep my hat and I want to turn on my hat press. So this is the hat press. And when you are um, doing sublimation, which is what we're gonna do for this one, we're going to put that on the highest possible heat for the press. Now in the original video, when I showed you how to set everything up, there is a there's a heat press app and this machine works with that app. It is phenomenal. So what we're going to do is we're going to pop over to the app really quick and I'm going to show you how to set your heat for this particular project. Okay, so this is our heat press app. So what we want to do is hit start new project. And then we are going to choose our transfer material. And because this is sublimation, we are going to use our infusible transfer sheets, which is Cricut's version of sublimation. And now we wanna choose our hat and we're gonna be using the trucker hat. And now it's going to give us some tutorials and things. We don't really need to go through those. We did those in the last video, um, but basically it's just gonna teach us how to use this um, tool. And then we have a five second preheat, a 90 second press, and a cool peel. So once you hit that button, it's gonna go over to your machine. It's gonna start heating it up to the exact temperature that you chose. It's gonna tell you exactly how long it's gonna to take to count down. Um, once that is ready and you start to actually press, um, it's great because then the app switches over and it shows you the countdown. So it shows you how many seconds you have in that 90 second period. Okay, so now let's prep our hat. So what we definitely want to make sure that we do is we're taking a lint roller and getting all of the lint off of this hat. We don't want anything that's going to let the ink adhere to it. I guess I could have put it on the hat form before I did this, probably make it a whole lot easier. And then the next thing that we want to do is we want to uh, flip it over and I wanna make sure and take this piece of paper out and I want to flip out um, the interior or that sweatband right there. So we wanna flip that out. So then we're gonna bring in our hat press and we're going to fit our hat on and you may have to you know, undo it in the back. Um, I've not had to do that yet, but if it depends on what kind of hat you have, right? So then we're just going to put the hat on. We want it to be really snug. Um, and if you've joined me for the other video, we've talked about like kid hats versus um, adult hats and that kind of thing. And I got the sweatband back up under there. Let's see if I can pull it back out. There we go. That's good enough. Okay, and so now what we want to do is make sure that it's really snug on there and then we're going to take our design and we are going to put it in place on our hat. And I'm not sure if you can see that on camera, but I can kind of see through this. Now we've talked about this before when you're doing sublimation like this, um, keeping the edge at the bottom kind of straight. That way you can you know, determine if it's crooked or not. So the last thing you wanna do is do the whole project and then it come out crooked. So just make sure that when you rip, that you kind of rip straight. So like my Y and P, they're about the same distance from the bottom. And remember that this is um, mirror imaged, so you want to make sure that you put it, you know, um, ink in. And then we're going to use the strong grip heat transfer tape to place it in place. You do not want to forget that part. Mm -hmm. 
Now that my design is in place, I'm going to actually take the parchment paper that I'm using and I'm going to place it on top and then I am going to put um, tape on each side of it as well. Because with the hat press, unlike the other presses, you actually do a rocking motion on the design um, because of the curvature. And so I want to make sure that my hat press does not catch the edges of my design. So I am just going to take a little bit more and cover that design with my parchment. And now for infusible ink, the hat um, or the heat press app is telling me 90 seconds. And so I am applying my sublimation as if it were infusible ink, because again, I've mentioned this to you guys that the infusible ink, which is Cricut's brand, it's, it's basically their brand of sublimation. And so I am going to abide by those rules for the sublimation project. Okay. So now you can actually pick up your hat and there's this nice little handle on the bottom. You can pick up your hat get a good grip on that and then pick up your hat press which is the perfect heat because we used the app okay so now that we're done with the heat we want to allow it to cool completely so we're just going to set that down um, and as a quick reminder guys if you're using sublimation or infusible ink remember to be in a well ventilated area window open ceiling fan on something like that so that you're not breathing in those chemicals especially with the hat press because um, you're kind of holding it and you're holding it near your face <laughs> okay so time for the big reveal so it's cool everything's cool This is my favorite part. I love the big reveal. Okay, so obviously I didn't get full color right here, so I just laid it back down and pressed it again. I think it's important for you guys to know that that's possible, and so you just wanna make sure that you are getting all of the area, and I think I would have if I wasn't trying to you know, catch it on camera before. So just make sure that you cover all of the area, and if you need to, you can always you know, mark on top of your parchment paper with a pencil or something so you know where the edges are. So basically, I just didn't get that edge over there okay so now that it's cool again let's try that again very nice okay so this time we got a good press now you notice that I cut away the area that pressed and I did that because I didn't want to have ghosting okay so there it is what do you think I am really in love with this and by the way if you have the PNG um, you can do this exactly a sublimation if you have the SVG you could take it into Cricut and modify the colors and do any color sampling that you wanted to okay guys let's move on to the next one Next up, we're gonna use infusible ink and we're gonna put a design on this hat. So this is one of the Cricut hats and so it is good for sublimation, it is good for um, infusible ink, it's good for HTV, but these hats are really great for the ink um, of sublimation or infusible ink because they are that poly blend that you need. So let's hop over into Cricut Design Space and I'll show you this one real quick. Okay, so back in Cricut Design Space. So we're gonna use the Chaos Coordinator for our infusible ink. And so I already have the design together if you're using this for um, HTV, so you have multiple colors. Let's just send it to Matt really quick so you guys can see what it looks like. So we have um, all these different colors, right? So we have each letter being a different color and then we have coordinator being a different color so that's great if you want to use HTV but we are actually going to use um, a multicolor infusible ink for the word chaos so it's going to look a little bit different but I think it's going to be really fun and then we'll use a singular color for coordinator so what we want to do is we want to hop over into um, the layers panel and we are going to grab the word chaos we want all of them and then we're going to actually change it to a singular color so I'm going to go up and just make it all one color because we want it to be together we want it to all be you know one item so now that it's all one color what we want to do is we want to 
click on it and just go over and ungroup and then we only want the word chaos and then we want to attach chaos and the reason you want to do this is because when you go to mat you want all of those letters to be in the right order so before they were individual cuts and they weren't attached to each other so that you could have multiple colors but when you put them together like this you need them to be attached so that it actually spells the word chaos and all the spacing and everything is correct and so now we just have multiple you know two different colors so if we hit make it so see now chaos is together and then we go down and we have coordinator together. Okay, so what now we can go ahead and cut these out of our infusible ink sheets. By the way, remember if there is anything heat related, which is what these are, you want to mirror image these designs. So make sure that you mirror image both of those and we can continue. Okay, so now let's choose our material. So we're going to be using infusible ink um, transfer sheets. And if you don't have that already in your favorites, you can browse all materials and those will pop up. And it gives you the little disclaimer here. Make sure that your mirror imaging is turned on, which we did, and that the ink is side up on your mat. Okay, so let's pop back over to the craft table and cut these out. Okay, so infusible ink, a lot like sublimation, um, you have to apply the heat to get the color. So if you look at the boxes, this is the colors that they should be whenever, um, they're, you know, whenever they're finalized or the heat is applied. Um, but this is what it looks like whenever you just put it onto the mat. So what we wanna do is we wanna start in the corner and we want to put down our infusible ink, ink up. And you can always take a scraping tool or a brayer, I like to use a brayer, um, and make sure that it's well applied to your mat. And then we just go ahead and put it in the machine and cut. So we're gonna be using our Explore 3. And so I'm going to load the mat. I love how quiet these new machines are. <laughs> so now our cut is complete. And so we can just peel that off. And I always bend my mat, not my material. And there we go. I went ahead and cut out the second color. So with infusible ink, if you've not used it before, the weeding process is kind of like a cracking process. It just depends on how big your design is. So you can sort of bend and move your uh, infusible ink and it will kind of pop and crack and pull away. So you can do it that way and just kind of peel. Uh, I do have a weeding tool if we find that we need that, especially for, you know, the center areas. So we'll go ahead and kind of pop that off. Okay, so now with our design weeded, we've placed our hat on the hat mold, making sure that we put our sweatband out um, with the handle on the bottom. And the next thing that we want to do is we want to take our lint roller and make sure that we have all the lint off of our hat. Now, I have not tried this, but I know that I have seen some other people talking about this and, um, and I'm sure you guys are gonna have questions. Cricut does not recommend that you put any designs on the bill of the hat, not on theirs anyway. Um, and so this is the area that they um, think that you should put design on or, you know, in this hat you could put pattern if you want to do a pattern or something on that. Um, the other one, the trucker hat, of course, has that um, ventilation or whatever it is on the back side of it. So you can't really put a design there, but on this one you could put a pattern just not on the bill. They don't recommend on the bill. Okay, so now once that is taken care of, the next thing we wanna do is get our design in place. And so I'm going to use a fabric ruler um, to determine my center point and get my um, designs in place. Um, you guys who craft with me know that I love to save materials, make sure and get that good in place. And I went to the uh, heat app and made sure that my machine is at the right temperature for this particular hat and infusible ink. So I just heard my machine beep. 
And so now we're going to be ready to press. So I'm gonna pick up my hat or put it on my hand. Makes it easier and then I've got my heat press. We're gonna hit the start button and so that's going to start our um, countdown. Make sure, especially on long designs like this, that you cover all the areas. Okay, so my favorite part, so we're going to, um, it's cool to the touch, and remember with infusible ink, it's the same as sublimation. You want to be in a ventilated area, ceiling fan, window open, something. Um, and so let's go ahead and remove our parchment. Oh yes, this is gonna be fun. Take that off slowly. Oh my. How cute is that? <laughs> and I love the way that it did like that, you know, kind of bleed across there um, as far as the color, you know, changing from blue to purple to kind of a lighter pink. I think that turned out really fun. For this hat, we're gonna use infusible ink pens. And so the only thing you need to do um, is to have your pens and to have a white sheet of copy paper. You have your mat. So what we're going to do is literally draw the design with our Cricut. And then I'm actually gonna use some markers to color in uh, a couple of areas of the design. And so there are all kinds, like this is a neon set of markers. And then these are what they call the freehand markers. So these, you know, you don't actually put into a machine at all you just use these and then they have um, an assortment kit of markers and an assortment kit of pens so I am thinking I'm going to probably use these colors for today I'm really loving the screen um, and then I even thought about um, using one color to outline and then another color um, actually the darker one to outline and then another color um, to color in but then again I may use black as well to do the outline okay so let's go ahead over to Cricut design space I'll show you the design and then we'll put this on the mat and get started so remember we have um, multiple types of pens here and then I'm going to draw the strawberry and then we're going to color in the topper and we're going to color in the strawberry itself with hand uh, infusible ink pens so we're just going to walk over here into the layers and we're going to turn off um, those colors Move down and turn these off because these are still cuts. If you see, those are cuts. Okay, and so we want to make sure that this set is um, attached so that it stays together on the mat when we draw this. So now let's go ahead and hit make it. Okay, and so now what we want to do is click on our design. We want to mirror image that. Continue. Okay, so now we're at materials and we're not actually cutting anything out. So we're going to use copy paper. So if you go to browse all materials and you select paper and it will pop up and give you some paper, copy paper choices. So we're just going to go with the 20 pound. And so now um, it shows us that our copy paper is the selection and then each of our infusible ink pens. So we're starting with black and then the fuchsia and then the green. So let's hop back over to the craft table and put those in the machine. But basically we just wanna put our copy paper on our mat um, and you can use a light grip map if you're worried about it. This one's a little bit older so it's a little less tacky, um, but a light grip mat would work great for this. And so we'll just put that in the machine like a normal piece of vinyl or HTV and then we will put in our pens. So now we have our Explore 3 and I'm just going to start with my black pen pop that in click it down close it and go So now with our design, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take those markers um, and just use a different color. So I love doing like paint chip versions. So this is just a couple of colors down from the fuchsia that we use for the word sweet. And I'm going to color that in. And then I also have um, this one, which is green apple. And I'm going to use that for the top of my strawberry. And if you remember from the design um, in Cricut Design Space, it was kind of messy. So it kind of went over. Um, so I thought that was kind of fun. So we're gonna do that. 
And then once this is done, we are going to apply it much like we did the um, sublimation and the infusible ink sheets. Now that they're colored in, we just want to cut out our design. And then we're likely going to, much like vinyl, if you guys have ever put vinyl um, or heat transfer vinyl on a curved surface, sometimes you have to cut um, little you know, lines in it so that the material will bend or fold well. And so we may have to do that here as well. And I'm probably going to take those out. I would suggest that you leave the bottom edge of your design straight. So it's going to be much easier for you to, um, you know, straighten it up or get it perfect on the actual hat, but you can fussy cut around or even, um, tear around because again, it's kind of like sublimation, right? So you can tear all the way around of your design. Okay, so once more, I have gone ahead and used my lint roller to clean up my hat, um, and I put it on the hat form and pulled the band out um, so that we don't have anything, you know, crinkling anything in our way. So the next thing for us to do is to go ahead and measure everything and tape it down. So the heat press has us at the highest possible heat, so 400 degrees, much like sublimation and infusible ink sheets, um, and it tells us 90 seconds. So now what we want to do is we want to take our heat press, we will pick up our hat, again well ventilated area, and then what we want to do is just start working back and forth, hit that go button, and it will start the timer down for 90 seconds. Okay, so now it's time for the big reveal. I hope this turned out really good. Wow, it definitely came through the sheet. You can see it came off on the parchment some. My goodness guys so cute oh my s didn't go down as well as I want okay so I'm just going to put it back down and then do that over one more time because I want that s I'm just gonna go on that corner and that's a good a good tip for you guys is when you're peeling something like this off and when it's all in one piece don't peel it all the way off until you see how it's looking so if you do have to place it back down um, it's gonna be in the same place whenever you put it back down Okay, so let's try that one more time. Okay, so I repressed the hat and I learned a couple of things and I'm really glad I can share this with you. So when I took my design off before, I was missing part of my design here and here and I thought it was pressure from the hat press. It was not. <laughs> If you look at what I did, um, I put heat resistant tape over top of my S and over top of the bottom of that strawberry. I mean, duh, right? <laughs> so what you need to do is leave a little bit of extra space so that you can tape down your design and not cover any of your um, lettering or any of your design. So that was totally my bad. So you won't have this kind of a problem. And obviously when I put it back down again, it is so difficult to repress, like try to never, never Ever repress so when I did I kind of messed up the W although I still am loving this hat and by the way in person it looks a lot like having something airbrushed we just got back from the beach and um, you know like when you go in the little gift shops and they can airbrush a t-shirt for you this is very much what that looks like okay so let's hop on to the next hat Okay, so next up, we are gonna try a different kind of hat, a non cricket hat, and we are gonna put a design on this really sweet little bucket hat for summer. Now back in Cricut Design Space, this is the design that we're gonna put on the bucket hat. So very simple, just good vibes. Um, I wrote these myself just out of fonts that I liked um, and curved the good just a little bit. Um, and I'm using two different colors and I'm actually thinking I'm gonna use different colors you know, on the actual hat. So like 
like a green and a yellow. Um, so, I mean, we can change that if we want to or just leave it as is. So, um, if you look over into layers, you can see that whenever I did, you know, I wrote these out, I welded them. I just used the weld tool um, to make them all together. And so now what I want to do is go ahead and hit make it. And so it brings it up on two different mats. And again, heat, we want to make sure that we're mirror imaging both of our designs and then we're ready to cut. So for our materials, we're going to be using iron-on. So here, I'm just going to be using the everyday iron-on. Okay, and it's reminding us to mirror image, which we did, and putting our, our material on shiny side down. Okay, so let's hop back to the craft table. Okay, so I'm going to actually cut both colors on the same mat um, at the same time, and I have um, how to do this in my 15 tips and tricks uh, video, which I will put up top and down below in the description for you guys. But basically, I'm going to cut out both of these colors and pop them onto the mat, and then we will go ahead and get those cut and weeded. I will link these colors up for you down below, but this is an easy weed lemon, and this is green apple. Love both of these colors. Okay, so now that I have weeded everything out um, and I put my hat, my bucket hat on the hat form and it's just too big. So what I've done is I've taken some um, sewing pins and I'm just going to tack it together in the back so that it gets a good tight um, surface area for me to work on. So I'm just pinning it in the back and then what I want to do is I want to measure between on this particular hat it has two vent holes here so I want to measure the distance between here and then put a pin in it so that I will know exactly where my center point is so I can put my designs on. Okay, so I measured the distance between these two and my center point was four and a half inches So I put a little pin right there so that I could see that easily and I pinned it in the back and I made sure that my um, Sweatband was flapped down. So now the next thing that we want to do is we want to put our design on our hat and because this is HTV it's going to stick which is fantastic so Let's give it a little placement and see, see what we think. What do you think? Does that look pretty good? Okay, so what we can also do, if you want to press them at one time, which is never a bad idea, right? You can take um, a pair of scissors and trim away the excess Okay, so let's take off the parchment paper. So this is a cool peel and it's almost cool. One thing I would um, give you this tip. So I pinned it in the back um, so that it would fit well on the form, but what also I think um, would help is pinning it to the sides. You want this to be as flat as absolutely possible. So I would pin it all the way around candidly um, just to make it fit just a smidge better. Okay, so let's go ahead and take off that heat tape. Okay, so for the next hat, we are also going to be doing heat transfer vinyl, but we're going to be doing pattern. Um, and I thought, you know, you could do glitter, you could do a shimmer, you could do all the different um, kinds. And then this is a different kind of sun hat, which I think we could actually put something on the bill of this if we wanted to. It's a little bit, um, it still has the stitching like the last um, bucket hat had, but it's a flatter stitching. So maybe you could do that. Or there's also, you know, the 
this rim here around that I think we could put um, a fun little monogram right here. But this is a interesting cap. Actually, it's kind of cool. I'll link all these down below, but it actually has a little spot for your ponytail to stick out the back. Isn't that cute? So I'm thinking like hiking and just, you know, normal summer fun, right? Okay, so let's hop over to Cricut Design Space and we will look at our design real quick. Okay, so for this hat, I want to put a monogram on it and I'm going to use the patterned um, iron on that I was just showing you. So I was thinking originally about putting a larger monogram on it in some, you know, spot on the bill or on the top, but now I've decided I really just want to put it, a small monogram right on that rim, right on the front of the hat. So I am going to reduce the size of this up here, making sure that my lock key is on. I'm going to reduce the size to one. Um, and so this is going to be a small cut, but I think it should be just fine. So we're going to go ahead and hit make it. Don't forget, we got to uh, mirror image this since it's a heated item, iron on. Okay, and so now we can continue. And since this is a patterned iron on, it doesn't actually have a different, you know, setting. It's just everyday iron on. So I'm going to choose that again. Um, it gives us our reminders and we're ready to go back to the craft table. Okay. So this iron on actually has three different patterns in it and they all would match the hat just fine. But I think I want to use this top one. Um, and so since it's just a small piece, I'm not going to break out um, my trimmer. What I'm going to do is sort of fussy cut out to get the colors that I'm hoping to get. And I'd love to get some of this color right here. So I am just going to cut out a little bit larger than what I need. And we will place that on the mat. Okay, so I just think this is gonna look so great. So I went ahead and sent my heat to my hat press. And by the way, when I went onto the app before I said, you know, I was just using um, the everyday iron-on cut for the Cricut and it worked great, but for the heat, I'm not sure if it's any different, um, but it actually has a patterned iron-on setting. And so I use the 100% cotton. So it's telling me five seconds to preheat, 60 seconds to press, and then a cool peel. So we're going to go ahead and um, go ahead and do a preheat. One, two. Yep. I'm going to go ahead and find my center point and put down my design. And so when I'm looking at this, there's a stitching right at the top of this hat. And so I'm going to use that as my center point for my monogram. So we're gonna get the B right in line with that and center it on this very small little edge. And then I am going to put down my heat tape not on top of my design like we did before. And then I'm going to get my uh, parchment paper. I want to put that over, especially the areas, the other areas, because this hat is an unknown kind of, um, and I don't, I mean, it says it's 100% cotton, but I'm just a little nervous. I don't want to mess it up because it's so stinking cute. So I'm going to put um, parchment paper here and here just to protect it. And then we will go ahead and heat. Okay, so I placed some parchment paper on both sides. And the thing is, is like this hat has these breathing holes right here on the side, and this could be a different type of fabric. It most likely is, I'm sure it's not cotton. I wanna make sure that I'm not going to um, heat those. And so when you get hats that are not like the normal Cricut hats, just be really careful about what those other fabrics might be made of. So if it tells me that this is cotton, that's great. Probably the rim and the fabric is cotton, but like what is inside of that bill? I just want to make sure that I don't mess anything up. And so I am not going to do the back and forth motion with this. I am just going to heat that area for 60 seconds and pray that it comes out great because this hat is so cute and I don't want to mess it up. Okay, so let's place that one over the top and the timer begins. Okay, so I took a little more time and a little more care um, and actually checked it a couple of times while I was doing it just because I wanted to make sure that I wasn't damaging any of the fabric around it. But I think we are good. So let's take off our protective coverings there. 
and then let's see and so this would be just like any other um, heat transfer vinyl you would want to pull from the edges let's get that heat tape off and guys, if you're ever tempted to use any other kind of tape besides heat tape, don't do it. Do not do it. Because it will ruin your fabric. Oh, it did so good. It did so good. I think it might. Okay, I'm really excited about this, guys. Check that out. Okay, so I don't think I could be more excited about how that turned out. It's personalized, yet it's subtle. Um, I'm really going to love wearing this hat. Okay, so I've decided to do one more. So we're gonna do a visor, um, and I am going to put a sweet little design on that that we've not done in Cricut Design Space yet. So I'm gonna pop over and show you that super quick, and we'll be right back and see how this works on visors. Okay, so back in Cricut Design Space, I just did a run ACA, which is our school. So I am a assistant coach for cross country and track and field. And so we do a ton of running in the heat of the summer. So I thought that would be the best thing to put on my little visor that we're doing. So I just did a very easy design, used a range to make sure that everything was centered. And so we're going to go ahead and cut that out of everyday iron on. Okay, and it is pretty small. It's less than an inch all the way around. So we're just going to mirror image and continue every day. And we're ready to go back to the craft table. Okay, so for the visor, much like the others, 100% cotton, I'm using iron-on. You could use, you know, glitter iron-on, regular iron-on. I'm actually testing out a flocked iron-on. I thought this would be really fun for this particular hat because it's like a denim hat. And so I just cut it out on the machine and did all the same normal things that we did before, you know, moving down the sweatband and all the things. So now what we wanna do is I've gone ahead and sent um, the right temperature for this particular uh, product to the heat the, to the hat press and so we're ready to test this out again since this design is so small I am just going to um, not move back and forth but just apply the heat so we'll go ahead and hit the go button okay so now that it's cool let's see how it did Guys, I don't know if you can see that very well on camera, but it is so stinking cute in person. And flocked is so fun because it has that fuzzy feel. Okay, so what did you think? That was really, really fun. Like there is so much you can do with the Cricut Hat Press. I um, really pushed myself on a couple of those projects because they probably wouldn't have been ones that I would have hopped onto immediately, especially the infusible ink pens. But I have to tell you, there's something therapeutic about being able to like color and draw and then, you know, put that onto something and I could totally see the most amazing Father's Day gifts with like the little person, you know, drawing their father a message and then putting that onto a cap. That would just be awesome. Okay guys, so if you have any questions, hop down in the comments and talk to me and don't forget, I put links to everything in the description. See you next time.